Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. This is kind of a hybrid Behind the Scenes and Ask Judy segment. If you're enjoying these, please do like and subscribe. Today, I'm taking up a question that was raised by Jeff. He asked what a typical day on the set was like from beginning to end. A day on the set varied uh, in many ways. Were we shooting outside? Were we shooting inside? That would affect the time everyone was called in. When we were shooting outside, we had to deal with how many hours of daylight we had and how much needed to be shot in that day. Overall, an episode took us six and a half days to film. We did not film on weekends. So a lot of times they would try to get all of the outside scenes shot first in case there were any weather issues. If you started inside and then you planned to go outside and you had a day of rain that didn't work, then you couldn't change that up and say, well, instead of being outside today, we'll go inside. So they would oftentimes want to get the outside things shot first so that they had that as a backup to be able to go inside if, if it was not good weather for shooting outside. Inside our shoot calls were usually around 8.30. And so prior to that, the actors might be called in anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour before the beginning of the day for hair and makeup. That would of course depend on who was in the first scene. Let's say everyone's in the first scene. So they would stagger it because we, you know, had a hair person, a makeup person. Sometimes if they needed a lot of, a lot of extra people, if, if say the Baldwin sisters and Ike and Cora Beth and other people were also there for a big day, they might bring in an extra hair and makeup person to get through preparing that many people. But let's say it was just a typical day. So the women usually had earlier calls because it took longer to do our hair and makeup. Uh, and then the men would be closer to call time. So you would arrive, you would check in with the assistant director, and then you would typically be sent to hair and makeup. And sometimes they'll say, well, somebody's already in the chair, so why don't you go put your wardrobe on and then, you know, wait. So Basically, you'd kind of go hang out in the makeup room until they were ready to put you in the chair and either hair or makeup would start with you. Then at some point when the crew was in and they had uh, sort of got basic uh, equipment into whatever set we were filming in, then the assistant director would come and call whoever was in the scene and say, good, we're gonna you know, have a rehearsal. So we'd go into the set and with the director and the camera operator and the cinematographer and then the crew that needed to kind of watch what was happening. That might include the prop department, the art department, people that would need to know what was being shot. The director would walk us through the scene, place us where he wanted us. We would run through the scene. We'd deal with any particular questions, issues, problems that might be there if the actor had a strong feeling about something, it may or may not be taken into consideration depending on how valid it was for what they were trying to do. So that was a pretty quick process. They would lay down marks for all of us where we were going to be, where we were gonna to move to. And once they felt they had enough to set the camera and do all the lighting, they'd send the actors back to finish getting ready. While then the camera set up and all the lights were brought up and everything was was prepared for that first shot, which would be typically what we would call a master, which was a big wide shot of the whole scene. So actors go, they finish getting ready. When, when camera and lights and everything are ready, the assistant director would call the actors back in. We would have um, final rehearsals for camera, for focus, all that kind of stuff. And then once that was set to go, then we would shoot it and we would do as many takes as we needed for the director to be happy with it and for the camera to say everything was in frame and in focus and sound to sign off on, you know, sound being good. And then at that point, we would start breaking it down into various different, what we called coverage, the close-ups, the various different angles 
that were going to be edited together for the final scene. Now, if we were facing a particular direction, they would usually want to get everything that was going to be shot that same direction because that way they didn't have to move as many lights and things like that. Plus, behind the camera was everything that the camera couldn't see. So all the rest of the crew and all other equipment and the sound people and everything else was behind the camera out of, out of frame. So shooting that direction allowed them to get everything that direction. So at that point, then it would be, okay, good, we're now going to push in on a two shot of these people, or we're going to get these three, or we're going to get this piece or this close up. And we would, we would, you know, click those off. Sometimes if there was a fair bit of change to be done, they might send us away. Sometimes if they said this is going to be pretty quick, they just ask the actors to stay. And because it's like, well, we're going to be really quick. And so they didn't want actors to disappear because it was always a bit of work to gather all the actors back up. You're talking about possibly 11 people to gather up. And were they on the phone? Were they having something to drink? Were they in the bathroom? Were they, you know, it's a bit of work to gather us all up. So if we were, say, sitting at the kitchen table, they would get everybody on one side of the table and then they'd have to turn around. So, you know, we might be facing towards the kitchen sink. And then when they needed to turn around, they'd be facing towards the living room. So everything that had been in the living room, everything had to be moved. So at that point, it was a much more major change. All the equipment had to move. All the lights had to move. All of a sudden, the living room, which may not have been properly set up, their chair might have been moved, some cushions, whatever. So that set would also have to be properly dressed as it would be normally in the show. So that would be a little bit longer turnaround to get all of that moved and positioned that direction. So same thing if we were outside, you know, uh, on the back lot shooting or some other location. Um, everything worked based on what direction the camera was and then turning it around the other direction. Um, that's why we would shoot all in one set because moving all of that equipment took time. So we shot out a sequence. Now, how they laid out a day also made a difference because obviously to get 11 people ready for the first scene of the day takes longer than getting three or four people. So often they might start with something that involved fewer people. So there was more time they could be actually getting work done, but there was more time to prepare additional actors for the second scene or the third scene. Um, before an episode started, there would be a whole shooting board set up that would lay out the schedule for the proposed schedule for the entire episode. Day one, we're going to be, you know, outside the house. Day two, we're going to be in the mill. So it would kind of be like that. So that was the projected schedule, which could change based upon any number of factors. Weather, which fortunately was rarely a factor in Southern California, but could play in. Uh, heaven forbid someone was sick. I mean, most of the time, unfortunately, we worked whether we were sick or not because it's not like somebody else could come and do our job that day. Uh, but sometimes there were mitigating factors that meant that we had to rework a, a schedule. Um, then within a given day, they would lay out the day uh, for a combination of, of things. One being we're going to be in one set uh, the children were always a factor because they had more limitations on our time. So the children typically had to be released by 6.30. And they could only be there for a total of nine hours, including an hour for lunch. So if you came in at 8.30, they were going to have to let you go at 5.30. If you came in at 9.30, they could keep you till 6.30. So they would try to bookend sometimes the beginning or the end with scenes with just the adults so that once the children were gone, there were still other scenes they could do, but they wouldn't want to do those in the middle of the day when they would lose the children and not be able to finish the scene. So those would become factors, plus how many people they had to have ready for a given you know, scene. Uh, and you know, any sort of big complicated things would be factored in, in terms of making sure there was enough time to get that finished. Scripts were usually somewhere around 55 to 60 pages at that point in time. So we're talking about doing eight to 10 pages 
of script a day, which sounds like nothing. But when you factor in all of the wide shots and all of the close-ups and having to relight and working out camera moves and all of that, it took time. That was getting through a lot when you figure that a big movie might do a page, two pages in a day. I mean, they spend months shooting a two-hour movie. If we did a two-part episode, we spent 13 days filming it. So we really moved fast. Um, so, okay, so you finish one scene and then they would then they would do a rehearsal for the next scene and then they would send those actors to change wardrobe. Typically we didn't change hair during an episode because that just ate up a lot of time if you had to keep going back and forth between one. What's your hairstyle in this, in this scene? Oh, now we have to change your hairstyle for this one. Now we gotta go back to that hairstyle. So pretty much the, the women kept the same hairstyle for an entire episode. So it would just kind of roll like that. We would rehearse a scene, then we'd go away, we'd get ready for it. The camera and the lights and everything would change. And uh, you know we'd go in and we'd shoot that. And then we'd move on. And at whatever time we broke for lunch, everybody would uh, have an hour for lunch. We'd come back. We'd go do makeup and hair touch-ups and on we'd go with the afternoon until such time as you were done for the day. If there was a scene you weren't in, you hung around because you didn't know how long it was going to be until they needed you again. So you just went to your dressing room or you hung out and chatted with people or you went to craft services and, you know, snacked and had something to drink or read a book or, you know, whatever it was. You always had to be prepared that you were going to have downtime during the day. So it would kind of roll like that. And when you were done with your last scene of the day, you would go and you would sign out with the assistant director. And if they knew what time you needed to be there the next day, they would give you um, that information and off you'd go. Uh, this was all based on like every day there was a call sheet and the call sheet listed everything about the production that was relevant to the shooting. On the front was all the actors call times what time you know you need to be in hair and makeup, what time they were expecting you, they would need you on the set, and what scenes were gonna be filmed, who was in those scenes, and then there'd be advanced schedule information on the backside, listed all the crew call times. Um, on the front, there was also who directed, who wrote it, the producers, emergency information. So all that kind of information. So each day, a call sheet would be prepared, and that's what everybody had as sort of the template for what was going to happen on a given day. So lots, lots happening there, but that is the basic overview of a day on the set. I hope you've enjoyed all this information. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too confusing. And thanks very much for watching, and I will see you on a future segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons, and also a future segment of Ask Judy. Thanks for your comments and your questions. See you next time. Thanks for watching.